Yeah, there's something wrong here. Hey, what's up YouTube, Down the Fix It Man. Got another quick video here for you. Decided to do a little bit of work here on the 67 Cougar. I've got the rear window not rolling up. Right now it's just completely stuck down. You see right here, got no action going on. I don't know if it's the regulator is bad or if it's come off the track or one of those little plastic sliding pieces is worn out. I have replaced this once before with a Dorman aftermarket and I don't know if that's what's giving me the trouble or if it's something else in there. We'll find out as soon as we get it taken apart. I'm going to pull out the back seat bottom and then the back and then we should be able to get in there and take this panel off and see what's going on. Now to take out the seat bottom it's pretty easy. Just pull it up. And then we'll just carefully take that out. All right, now to take off the back part of the seat, you've got two screws down here, one on either side. Those are three eighths. All right, and then the back should just lift up. Just pull it forward and kind of wiggle it up a little bit. And then we can lift this one out of the way and you can see into our trunk here our little mat here is kind of falling down it usually goes into these clips all right now we've got the seat out of the way we can take this panel off now first we need to take off the window regulator handle and on this vehicle it's just held on by a little allen set screw right here just loosen and remove that and then just pull off this little plastic protector that lets it slide when you're cranking that all right now we just have a few screws there's one right here there's one down here it actually goes through the carpet this one here this one here and we also might need to take off this metal door sill plate but uh, i'm not sure i can't remember if i took that off now you can see this one's a lot longer and then there's one right down here kind of buried in the carpet and you know i just don't want to force anything so i'm going to go ahead and take this off as well There we go. All right, now this should just come right off. Now this piece, we can just pop this off. All right, now we should be able to take off this panel. Just kind of pull it towards you. Might have to tuck the carpet down a little bit, give you some space to pull this out. And once you get it past the regulator shaft, this should just kind of pop up. Just be careful with it. Ah, oh, I forgot one more screw right here. Yep, I forgot this one here also has to come out. All right, now it should come out. All right, now this is the little paper covering. Carefully peel this back, try not to rip it. Looks like I've already ripped it before. Either me or somebody else, I don't know. Just kind of go slow if you're wanting to keep this. Peel it back out of the way. Oh boy, what did we get ourselves into here? Well, we've got a wire that's also being pulled. That's not good. So this regulator hooked up to, with a wire. Yep, that's no good. Well, I'm glad I got in here. We can get this figured out. I'll drop this down so I can get that wire out there and see if that's damaged or needs to be repaired. Let's just pull this paper the rest of the way off. Well, it does not appear to be damaged. That's amazing. Almost looks like this is what secured them previously. Probably some little hole that that snapped into. But we know right now we do have an issue even with this regulator. You know, it, it is going up and down, but it's kind of slipping already. So like that right there, there's definitely a problem with this regulator. All right, I'm just trying to pull the glass up and out of the way for right now. All right, now you can see we have one, two, three, four, five, six bolts that hold this regulator in. And these are all half inch. Let's take these all out. All right, now I realize maybe this one here doesn't need to come off because that's just a part of the track. Stand by, I might put that one back in. And then we should just be able to drop that regulator out. All right, a little.
little bit of a puzzle, but you get the idea. And you can see this piece is completely gone or wore off. At least half of it's gone. This one's still on. All right, so this one here, this is just the track. This one did not need to come off. I'm gonna put this one back on. So the way this works, this little slider goes into this channel that's right here in the window itself. And then this one that faces in is the one that goes on this inside track. And that's the one that looks like we had some problems with. It looks like it not only came undone, but maybe that's what caused this to pop out. Okay, now this piece right here that I undid, now that had to come out in order to take this regulator off. But what this is, is a little stop. So that goes on the inside and it's mounted right here. And what it does is it prevents that regulator arm from going too far. You can see right here where it's been making contact with the stop. So that just prevents you from overdoing it when you're uh, cranking a window as far as going too high it will actually stop this arm and prevent that from going beyond where it's supposed to go. But it looks like maybe this um, overextended or went too low. I'm not really sure what caused it to get out of the track, but uh, we also had the little issue with the wiring, picking up the wire. So let's go take this over to the bench and compare it to the old regulator that I had. And I'll just have to make a decision on which one I think is best. I think we may end up putting the old one back in if I can get it freed up because it was really stuck when I took it out. All right, now this right here is the original regulator that I took out. I guess it was about a year ago. And then this is the Dorman one that I just took out a few minutes ago. Now, this is crazy, but this thing was so stiff, I couldn't move this at all. And I just sprayed it before I started with some PB Blaster just to see what would happen. I just kind of set it in this little tub here and gave it a, a spray just to see if it would free this up. And as you can see, this is super, super smooth now. Look at that. Can't even believe that. But I guess I gotta believe it because I'm looking right at it, but look at that. This thing now is super smooth. Even the mechanism, I mean, this was so stiff and locked up. And now look at this, totally moving just fine. So guess what? I'm gonna put the original one back in. Such a world of difference from what this was. I know you guys didn't really get to see that and I didn't make a video last time I changed this out. Just an amazing difference right there. So now that this is all freed up, I'm just gonna put this one in. This, this Dorman one, you know, it was okay for about a year. I mean, look at that. That's how it came. You know, I'm sure, I'm sure PB Blaster would probably loosen this one up too. Stuff's amazing. Yeah, it's better, but the original one is, is even smoother or looser, I should say. You know, this is newer, so maybe it's a little bit more snug, but that might be part of our issue as to why this came off the track. And I may not have had the stop installed properly. I'm not really sure, but even the mechanism, I mean, this one is very smooth and really doesn't have much play at all in that uh, gear. And then this one here, let's try it with the handle. I just, I can just feel it's just kind of choppy, but more importantly, yeah, I don't know if you can hear that, but that, that's no good. This one here, the original one is way better. And I mean, this is over 50 years old. This one about a year and just couldn't handle it. Now your regulator may not be worth saving. It might be rusty. It might be, you know, beyond repair or beyond saving. But if you have to go with aftermarket, I mean, this one, I wouldn't say that it's terrible. It's just that you better make sure that all of the tracks and everything are really lubed up. I think the window is a little stiff, which also might've put a little bit of stress on this Dorman, but I'll work on cleaning this up and then we'll get some good grease on here and put it back in. All right, so I'm gonna use this right here, this Blaster, same company that makes the uh, PB Blaster or the Penetrating Catalyst. This is just their white lithium grease. I'm gonna spray that all on the gears. Also gonna clean out all of the tracks on the inside and we'll spray that with this stuff too. I also have the new bushings. They look just like this. I'm gonna clean these studs off first and then we'll put those bushings on too. Put that on, make sure that that's spinning freely and that little clip locks it on. So that's not gonna come off now. And of course we'll get that all lubed up too. Just flip this over. Stuff gets really messy, but you know, we just want it to want it to be smooth. There we go. That's how easy those go on. They just pop right on. 
I'm just gonna run this a few cycles just to see how that works. Look at how smooth that is now. I mean, piece of cake. This is gonna work great. Super happy with that and very happy that I get to reuse the original one here too. Yeah, I know I'm probably overdoing it a little bit with this white lithium grease, but I really just wanna make sure that this thing is smooth up and down. We don't have any binding and I just don't wanna deal with the uh, window getting stuck down again. So let's take this over to the car now. I'm gonna clean out those other channels and we'll get them greased up as well. And then we should be able to put this back in and we'll set that stop and should be good to go. Now, one of the drawbacks to this white lithium grease is this stuff gets really sticky. You know, it's good that it stays in place, but man, it sure gets sticky. So I think it's kind of a, a maintenance thing here. We need to make sure that these tracks are nice and clean and lubed up as well. Also need to get this track in the window. This track over here on the right, we need to get that too. There we go. That's uh, definitely getting better. You can see this has a stop here at the bottom so that this doesn't go too far down, but there's also stops up here at the top. I'm gonna go ahead and put a little diagram that I found online and that will show you what these look like and where the stops are. So if you actually have to take apart the whole thing, you can do that too. All right, now I've got the window just pushed up. It, it stays, it's, it's still a little stiff. I wish it would go up a little bit easier, but it's a lot smoother than it was. And I think it's gonna work fine once we get the regulator on. Just kind of feed this up through here, just like we took out the old one. All right, now you can see when you get this in, you just wanna position it so that we can get the first little plastic slide into the channel here. Now here we might have to turn the regulator a little bit in order to get it to cooperate with us. There we go. Okay, lined up. All right, let's just get these started now. Now what I did, I kinda just positioned the two sliders here before I got these bolts started. There might be a better way to do this. That's just what I was able to do and it looks like it worked out okay. Now we still need to put in the stop. Now you can see this is actually a little bent up. I'm gonna take this over to the vise, see if I can flatten that out because what's probably happened is someone's you know cranked on this so hard that it's pulled this away. So I'm gonna see if I can bend that back into place. Well, it's not perfect, but I got it a little bit straighter, a little bit more flattened out. And this should now mount right here and stop this arm from going too far. All right, I'm gonna tighten up the four mounting bolts first. <laughs> Before I tighten this one here, before I tighten the stop, I'm gonna try to adjust that at the maximum height that I want it. So if we go up, really right there. So that's actually kind of low. I'm gonna mount it kind of low because I want this to stop before somebody gets too carried away. Now I can feel the back of the stop touching that arm. This one I'm gonna crank pretty snug. Just don't want that to move. So now let's give it a test. all the way up and I could feel it hit that stop. Let's secure these wires that are down here and make sure that those don't get in the way in the future. But I think we got lucky. We don't have anything that got pinched or frayed or anything like that. We got pretty lucky on that. But let's go ahead and zip tie these, kind of tuck them back as far as we can out of the way and then we can button this back up. All right, now it looks like this plastic piece right here probably snapped in to this right here. So. I'm gonna put it back only for the sake of giving me something to zip tie around or zip tie to. So let's do that. That worked really well, actually. Perfect, exactly like we wanted. I think we'll just do one more just to make sure that these stay clear. So here's what I did. I just put this little plastic clip back in and I zip tied these wires to the top and bottom of this white clip. And I was able to put it right back where it goes. I also just did a, one little zip tie here to secure these wires, just to keep them out of the way of the window here. But it looks like it's gonna work out just fine. Rolls down. Rolls up and it goes all the way up until we hit that stop. 
and you can see it's all the way to the top so i think we're ready to put everything back together so let's get that paper and then we'll put that panel on and wrap this up all right we can put this little paper covering back on i know it kind of seems silly but i'm gonna put it on just because it looks like it belongs that glue that they use or that gummy stuff usually sticks pretty well. You know, if you just line it up and push it back on. I guess we're missing a little piece of paper here, but that's okay. All right, and then let's grab the panel here. Just kind of take note to the top edge. You're gonna be wedging that in between. And then this back piece just goes underneath the rear deck area. So just kind of watch that as you go. Shouldn't be too difficult. Okay, I've decided that this might be a little bit easier with the window down. So I'm gonna put the window down this top piece right here has to wedge in between there and i think with the window down it'll be a little bit easier let's give it a try here again all right you don't want to force this but you might have to you know give it a little love tap here and there but i'm going to put this screw in here first everything should just go in pretty easily now this one right here now remember the carpet here goes on the outside all right, then we can put this piece here. It's like this little rubber end cap, plus this piece right here. Now again, all of these right here should line up pretty easily. And we'll put that screw in. Okay, remember this is the longer screw right here. Should be pretty obvious because it won't start grabbing until it's quite a ways in. And then this trim piece or this little rubber end just kind of Push it in place and it will just hold that little lip of the carpet and this edge piece. Now remember there's one more in the carpet and if you need to know where it is, you can pull the carpet back just a little bit. You can see it right here. Okay, and then we can put on a little door sill plate here. All right, and then don't forget this little disc right here before we put on the little crank handle. So that right there is fully rolled up. I'm not sure if that's the original position or how they're supposed to be, but that's about where the other side is. And then we can tighten that little Allen screw in there to hold this on. All right, that's nice and snug. All right, well, let's go grab the seat back. We'll put that one in first and uh, get that screwed in. And then we can put in the seat bottom and this should be done. Okay, so you see these hooks right here they just clip onto these bars there's a basically a bar on either end and that just has to slide right into that so let's do that okay that's on i'll just get these screwed in bottom of the seats all right now we can go grab the seat bottom and pop that in just need to pull the seat belts up from behind it and should be good to go. See, I like to get that guide out too, so we're not pinching anything. And then I kind of try to put these ones on the side. All right, and you're done. I hope you liked the video. Please give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you don't mind. That does help me out. I'll get a link in the description where you can pick up some of these replacement parts along with some of the tools I used as well. Thanks so much for watching and good luck.